Oh, my lands, welcome to another amazing episode of this podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Put your seatbelts on because my guest today, she's going to teach the three criteria. There are three pieces, three pieces or three criteria for which a property can qualify for a short sale. You as a real estate investor, you're already investing money on marketing. You've already got leads coming in. And I guarantee you, when you stay on here for the show and watch my guest and learn from her, you are going to make a bunch more money because I guarantee you right now, you are throwing leads in the trash can that can be turned into big time profitable short sale deals. And guess what? My guest actually has a done for you way of getting your short sales done. So if you are remotely interested in learning about short sales, how to get it done, learning the three criteria, don't go anywhere because we are beginning the podcast right now for you. Put your seatbelts on because my guest today is, first of all, is the best selling author of this book called Short Sales Uncensored and also how to master short sales. So yes, there's no question as to why she is known as the short sale queen. And she's grown her company nationwide, expanding, hold on to this, into 14 states, doing business in 14 states. Now, before my guest did short sales, she actually had a background as a REO or bank owned manager, and she worked with over 50 lenders. Now, she's closed thousands and thousands of short sale transactions successfully and to this day continues to process hundreds a month for her clients that she actually has nationwide. Uh, in addition to that, my special guest and friend has been featured on several real estate panels and podcasts and TV segments. Her extensive knowledge in distressed properties has actually made her the market expert when it comes to dealing with difficult transactions. With that, I'm so excited to introduce and bring on here onto the show with me, Nicole Espinoza. Nicole, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I love the enthusiasm. I'm going to have you introduce me every time. <laughs> <laughs> we can sure do that, Nicole. And I tell you, Nicole, it was so amazing and so fun and exciting to uh, be with you in uh, one of our masterminds that we're both in just yeah. a few weeks ago. Um, you and I were just talking about it before we came on camera here as to the amazing speakers we were around. We were around the legends like Ron Legrand and uh, Robert oh, yeah. Allen and, and so many. So it's just so great to be uh, having the opportunity to, to meet you at the mastermind and now to have you uh, on the show. So are you ready for my questions? I am. And just so the audience knows, you have I have no idea what you're going to ask me. So like you said, behind you know the scenes, like this is going to be raw. Like, let's go. <laughs> it is raw because right now we are live on YouTube <laughs> and FaceTime and uh, in a very, very short uh, couple of weeks. So uh, this will also be on iTunes and our other podcast platforms. But you're right. Nicole, you do not know what I'm going to ask you. So here we go. First of all, I want to know, it's a two-part question. Okay. I want to know how you got involved in real estate to start with. And then secondly, how is it that you migrated and, and really became an expert and focused on short sales to where you became known as, and you're still known as the queen of short sales? Yeah, absolutely. So I got in the business um, 2009, and like you had said previously, I was working with REO asset managers. So my experience, I kind of just fell into real estate. I originally from Florida, I moved to Texas, and I fell into real estate doing working with these REO lenders, uh, working with a broker that that's all they did. And so really knowing absolutely nothing about real estate, like I was Googling like, okay, what is a homeowners association? Like, how do I file this eviction to get these people out? I learned, <clears throat> excuse me, I learned the hard stuff before I learned the easy stuff. I was learning all about how they worked and operated and really couldn't tell you, you know, the basics of, of real estate transactions. So fast forward, 
I had, I knew that I wanted to do something within real estate when I got my license um, that was more than just working with buyers and sellers because I had so much knowledge and I had so much experience, but I didn't know, you know, really what that looked like. So left working with the banks and my first listing, the first client I had, it was a short sale. And I had no idea what that even was. I just knew that it involved a bank. And really how I, I got into it was when I had asked all these people around me, the broker, the, the people that, um, you know, that I worked with and people in the industry, they told me just to walk away. They said, don't waste your time. Short sales don't close. Don't worry about it. And that really intrigued me because I'm like, okay, here I have a homeowner that needs help. They're ready, willing to work. They're ready and willing to work with me and they want to work with me and they need to sell. So why wouldn't I try to come up with a solution? And that started everything as far as how I thought and how I really approached every homeowner. Like I need to figure out how to create a solution. And so that evolved into short sales. Um, I was on the phone with Aquin, who was the lender at the time for over an hour. And I asked them a hundred questions. I'm sure to this day, he was, he's so annoyed, probably uses me as an example because he couldn't hang up on me. He just had to keep answering my questions. And then I developed the short sale process that we use today. Um, when I realized that there was such a lack of education in this space, when it comes to this niche, that's when I started teaching classes. And then I started really branding myself as the expert. I mean, but I wasn't the expert until I did hundreds and hundreds of transactions. And now thousands later, you know, wrote a book on it. Um, and then really just because of the demand uh, from realtors and other real estate investors started teaching about it. So that's that is all. That's awesome. Nicole. Let's make sure our audience, all of our audience understands what a short sale is. So what in the world do you mean when you say this is a short sale or uh, this uh, has the potential to be a short sale? Absolutely. So a, a short sale is where a homeowner has some type of financial hardship. OK, so they've lost their job. They, they went through a divorce and they can't afford the house. So now they're in a situation where they have to sell the home or lose it to foreclosure. But if they sell it, they have to come to closing with money. And that's money that they don't have. Right. That's why they missed the payments. So they have no equity in the house. So the choices are lose the house because I don't have the money or we go to their bank and we get the bank to take a loss. So instead of the homeowner coming up with 20, 30, 40, how much ever thousands of dollars, we get the lender to accept a, a, a lower payoff so that they don't have to go to foreclosure. And the reason why the bank agrees to that is at the end of the day, if the bank forecloses, they're only going to get what the house is worth. So if they sell it now through a short sale, they can mitigate their losses by not having to worry about the homeowner trashing the house, paying for a foreclosure attorney and going through that whole process. You have a homeowner that's willing to cooperate, maintain the home during the process and then sell it for the highest that they can. So, so, when, that's so, short sale. so when you're helping a client uh, that's in that situation, part of your job, part of your service is to justify and convince the mortgage holder mm -hmm. why they would want to consider a short sale on this particular property versus a foreclosure versus them going into foreclosure and to show the lender how they will save money. Is that right? That's correct. Because the bank is always going to look at the cost of like basically what you just said. They're going to look at, okay, if I foreclose, am I going to make more or less by agreeing to do a short sale? So most of the time they're going to make less because if they have to go through a foreclosure, think about this one, the homeowner can drag it out for a very long time, right? They can do bankruptcy. They can, you know, attempt to try something with the bank, all of that. So who knows when they can actually move forward into foreclose. Once they do, they have to pay a foreclosure attorney. Meanwhile, they're not getting any money, right? They keep spending money and they're not collecting. Then they're going to have to evict the homeowner, file for eviction, then finally hire an agent to go through the process, see what's going on, and then list it for what the house is worth. So why not avoid all of that if you have a homeowner that's, will that's willing to cooperate and sell it now for what it's worth? Are most short sales that you work with in the multiple listing service or are they off market? 
uh, houses that people own that may be behind on payments? So 100% are off market. So all of these homeowners, we're going directly to them. Uh, now, our company is 100% referral. So we have real estate agents and real estate investors all over the country who come across a client or a potential homeowner that's that's off market, that's in this situation and can't afford it, and they refer it to us. So in those situations, like let, let's talk, you know, this, to real estate investors, right? They're doing direct marketing on a high level, right? They are work. They spend a lot of money getting that data, and then they're getting those clients. And then when the numbers don't make sense and they don't fit in their in their buy box. What do they do? They throw away the lead, right? Because the deal doesn't have equity. So that's why it's a perfect partnership because now all of these leads that you've thrown away because they don't fit in your buying criteria, now they're sending them to us and now they're having the opportunity to be able to purchase them with equity from the lender because now the payoff is no longer relevant. So instead of trying to make it work with what the homeowner owes and paying you know, the HOA and the second lien and all of these things just to, to pay it off, now the bank is gonna take a loss out of their net and now the investor gets the opportunity to purchase at a discount. Excellent, okay, so here's the big question, Nicole. Here's the big question. So as a real estate investor, all right, so I'm a real estate investor, right? I've been full time since 2003. So as a real estate investor, I invest money in marketing. Uh, and like you just said, like 90 plus percent of the of the deals that we do today are from for sale by owners. They are not in the multiple listing service. So right. as a real estate investor, what are the clues? What is the criteria for me as a real estate investor to say, you know what? This deal looks like it could qualify as a short sale and I need to send it to Nicole and her team to work the deal. How, how do I identify it and even recognize it as a possible short sale? Absolutely. So now this is, we're going to talk about your existing leads. So the best part about this is that this is not something that you have to go seek out, right? So this is within your own leads of people that you're marketing to that are motivated. OK, so you have leads that homeowners need to sell. They need to sell because they're about to lose the house or they need to sell because they can't afford it. So most of the time, the people that, that are in that fit with the short sale, like you're saying, are people that are in pre foreclosure or in foreclosure. OK, so they have some type of deadline where they're like, hey, I need to do this now. Right. If they are behind, they have a financial hardship that we can prove because if they didn't have a financial hardship, they just paid the mortgage, right? <laughs> so generally, it's very easy to prove that hardship right now because of the pandemic. Most people are just saying COVID <laughs> and, you know, that that's the hardship that they fell behind because of the pandemic. So that's one. And then the second, as far as looking to see, because just because someone's in foreclosure, it doesn't mean it's a short sale. So we work a lot with pre-foreclosures and right now in this market with, with the inventory shortage. There are so many homeowners that have to sell now and it's perfect for investors, but they, they don't, they actually have equity. So they don't have to go through that process. So it's very important that on the second part where you're like, okay, you have a hardship. This is the first qualifying for a short sale. The second is, do you actually have equity? Like making sure that you know everything that's owed, not just the mortgage, right? So you're getting a payoff to, to see what's actually owed um, on that loan. But also, is there homeowners associations? Are there other um, like dues? Are there other liens? Are there judgments? All of that has to be factored in where your offer has to cover it. If your offer, were of whatever it looks like, right? Because if you buy it 70%, 80%, whatever that looks like as an investor, because everyone's margins are different, if it looks like, hey, there's no way that there's equity with me purchasing, that's a short sale. And, it, and it's important to understand that the bank's not going to take a loss so that an investor or somebody that's buying it can get an extra discount, a deeper discount, right? They have to legitimately be upside down with no equity. So in those situations, it's, it's very easy when someone falls behind to be upside down, even in a market like this, if they're years behind, if they have repairs that are needed in the house. So even if the house was in perfect condition, you know, in those situations, it all adds up. 
So that's how you identify it. You look at everything and say, okay, my offer is $100,000. And in order for the homeowner to be made whole and not come to closing with anything, they would need an offer for one hundred and fifty. dollars so now instead of that homeowner coming up with 50,000, we're going to get to go to the bank, have them take a hundred. So they take the loss and now I can buy it at a discount. Got it. Now, typically, I, and I know this must vary all over the board, but just yeah. on average these days, from the time you and your team start working on a uh, potential short sale, how long does the process take? So great question. There's so many different factors to that. Just the simple fact that you know, say there's multiple liens that have to be negotiated and all that. Our average time frame is three to four months from start to finish. Now, hey, that's, pretty, that's pretty quick given my experience. Yes. I was just going to say now the industry average is a year plus. Right. <laughs> industry average is a year plus because the people that are processing have no clue what they're doing. And so the bank won't tell you the reason why this is a niche is because the banks don't tell you, hey, you know, we need this, this and this. You send in something and then the bank waits three weeks to review it. Oh, by the way, I still need this. And you just play this game of cat and mouse forever until finally, you know, someone either steps in or, or the seller loses the house. So that's why it takes so long because the financial review, if you don't have all the documents, if you don't know what to send to the bank, it could take forever. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, years ago, I did short sales myself and okay. I didn't have to I didn't have to do many of them to learn. <laughs> I don't want to do this, right? Yeah. I want somebody like Nicole Espinoza and her team to like, let me hand this over and just, you know, you all just take care of it because I'm telling you, you know, negotiating a short sale is very, if you're doing it all yourself, it's very time or very time consuming or can oh, yeah. be time consuming, right? Well, we would never do it if we only had one or two. And, and this is why we only do this, right? Like, even though, you know, we're realtors, we're not working with traditional sellers. We're not running around with buyers. Like, no, this is all we do is short sales. And just because of what you just said, it is extremely time consuming. But the difference is when you call Wells Fargo, you are calling for one file. When we call Wells Fargo, we're calling all 15 at once because we do this at a high level. Wow. Well, that really gives you leverage. And I'm sure... Because of that volume of business, it helps you get more of those short sale deals negotiated uh, to the real estate investor actually being able to make a deal, right? Oh, 100%. We have contacts at every lender. Just because over time, when we're working with, with the same uh, lenders and the same negotiators, over time, we start to we start to get contacts, you know, okay, we know the manager at the executive office for Wells Fargo. We know, you know, Bank of America's escalations team. Like, we just know how to facilitate the process. Um, and the hardest part about short sales is how do you get a yes when they constantly are telling you no, right? Like, how do you get around a bad value? Like, those are key things that are really what separate and differentiate us from someone that's just trying to see if, you know, they can just get a short sale done. Like, I wish it was that simple. Then everybody would do it, right? Right, exactly. Well, I mean, you've got years and years and thousands of transactions now, you know, you and your team under your belt, and you know what to look for. So what are some uh, tips and recommendations that you can give our audience as to, when they see, when they, they, they've got a lead, they've got a motivated seller that's behind on their payments. There's little to no equity. Maybe yeah. they're upside down. Maybe they owe more than the property is actually worth. Now we're looking like we got a short sale. What yeah. kind of convert, what kind of conversation should the real estate investor have with the owner of that property and what should they do? What should the real estate investor do uh, before turning this uh, potential deal over to you and your team? Yeah. So, I mean, here's the deal. The hardest part is getting the data or getting the leads and then getting them like at building rapport, right? Like you've got them on the phone and if you're right there already talking to them and you realize that it's a short sale, that's where you're going to say, hey, 
we still are able to help you, even though this is how much you owe. And it looks like this might be a, a short sale. You know, we're going to send you over to our team. This is what they specialize in. This is all they do. And it's important to have like that warm pass off because you've already done the hard part of building rapport. What we don't want to happen is, you know, you're like, okay, we'll see what happens. And then you send us the, the homeowner's information or you give the homeowners our information and nothing ever comes from it. Um, we, we want it to be as efficient as possible because what you guys need to understand is that when you're talking to people in this situation, there's a very small window of motivation and cooperation. Like it's, it's so true. Like they probably called you back and, and that's it. That's their capacity is that one conversation. So you'll have 24 hours to really get them on board and get them engaged. Um, they're not in this situation, you know, because they're trying to be proactive here. They're in this situation because they have their head in the sand and they've done absolutely everything um, to avoid the foreclosure. And now they have to do something because there's a sale date or you know something's going on. So it's important that once you have them engaged, that you're sending it to us right away. Um, we make it super simple. You just go right to the website. Um, you put refer a lead. It goes right into our CRM and we they get contacted within 30 minutes. Because our entire company is based off of referrals, um, this is something that we're, once you're in our system, like we have we have sellers that sometimes it's not right away and we're still following up with them. They're, they're on drips where we check in every six months. Um, we do a really good job of educating these homeowners so that they don't feel like we're trying to sell them on anything. Um, we're here to be a resource for the community, for the homeowners, for the investors. Um, and what that does is that it builds such a solid rapport where these homeowners want to work with us, where they want to go through the process. Um, so it's important you know, to answer your question, that it's a warm handoff. And that once you realize that, that you send it to us sooner than later, because if they do have a foreclosure date, our focus is going to be stopping the, the sale date so that we can actually have time to work on the short sale. That absolutely makes sense. Hey, just in case, Nicole, some of our audience has to leave the show a little bit early. I want yep. you to go ahead and give out your contact information because I know we got a ton of real estate investors that have got opportunities coming across their desk that they're missing out on without having the um, the way to contact you. So how can people get up? How can real estate investors get up with you to help them with the short sale process to close more deals? Absolutely. So they can go right to our website, vssqueen.com. It's also on the screen. Um, and then you can go for free education, go to our YouTube. Um, and our YouTube is the short sale queen tv.com. So the short sale queen tv.com. Either way, you'll have our information in both of those places. Um, so if you just want to call our office and just find out our process and you know how we can have a relationship, you know, give us a call. Our information's on the website. Um, I always tell people, and this is how I built my brand and my reputation. If you just want to run something by us, even if you're not sending us the deal you know, we're happy to help and be a resource for you um, and your business. That's awesome. So one more time, folks, uh, she's got two websites. Nicole's got two websites. That's www.the, T-H-E, S for short, S for sale, queen.com, the S-S queen.com. And the other website that she has is www.theshortsalequeentv dot com the short sale queen tv dot com now let me ask you this question sure nicole when a real estate investor has a short sale deal or a potential short sale deal you and your team negotiate it now you've got the lender the more the the uh the mortgage holder to agree to a much lower price to right. pay for the property than what they owe to the lender does the real estate investor somehow, some kind of way need to have all the cash so they can close the deal? So they need to figure out how to, how to do that. Right. <laughs> um, but they can do it hard money, private money, however they want to be able to fund it. Now I will say that 
you know, in some deals, it, it has to be able to, um, like, you know, some houses, they're not going to be able to finance, right? So just in, in any way that you're purchasing, hard money, if you have relationships with private money um, or cash, but the bank will give you 30 days to close. And as part of our process, we give you plenty of time. So how it works is every week, every Monday, you'll get an update on our, um, from our office on every lead that you send over. So there's never going to be a time where we're like, hey, we got a great deal closing next week. Like we'll give you plenty of notice. So you have time to come up with the capital. Um, but just like any deal flow that you guys are already working, you're going to have exit strategies, right? And you're going to have ways to be able to fund it. Absolutely. Well, Nicole, you and I are a perfect fit when <laughs> it comes to short sales, because guess what? I know there's a ton of real estate investors out there that struggle to get the money raised. They struggle to have private money. And, you know, unless you know how to get the private money, then getting private money is hard. But when you know how to get it, it's like the money chases you. And for that reason, Nicole, I have just finished writing my brand new private money guide that gets real estate investors on the fast track to getting private money. I'm talking not hard money, not hard right. money lenders, not institutional money, but I'm talking getting money from individuals. I'm talking about in this money guide, learning how to get as much as $500,000 or more in less than 30 days. So folks, you can get this for free. This goes perfectly hand in hand with Nicole's service on short sales. The name of this guide that I just finished writing is seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. You can get it for free right after the show at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Download it. You'll get private money right away. Again, that's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. And I tell you, Nicole, I mean, that's it. That's why I asked the question. I know in this world of short sale, the real estate investors got to have, got to have the cash ready to go sitting on the shelf. And that's why I tell real estate investors, get the money lined up first. And Nicole, I know you've heard it. I know you've heard it. I've heard it a hundred times from other educators. They say, get the deal under contract, get the deal under contract. The money will show up. Give me a break. Where's the money going to show up? Is it going to like rain out of clouds or something? <laughs> and you know, I tell people all the time, Think how much more confident you're going to be oh, yeah. to make offers when you got $500,000 burning a hole in your pocket, right? No, 100%. Um, first of all, I will go ahead and, and grab that guide from you. So I'll be one of the first people. Um, that's awesome. Um, now, as far as what you're saying, I hear that all the time. I think that you know a lot of times people fail to take action. And they have like analysis process where they feel like they have to have absolutely everything lined up, um, which they don't, right? You just have to go do it. You have to get your first deal. But if you don't have resources and ways to be able to fund them, then what are you doing? You're wasting your time. You're just wasting a contract like paper. And I have people all the time that will solicit us and say, you know, we'll close quick, pay cash, whatever. And then it's time. And they, they hound us. They hound us. Like, when are we going to close? And then I'm like, great, we're closing on Wednesday. I'm not ready. I don't have the money. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's like, why even waste all that energy if you don't? So that's amazing. Um, definitely would love the guide because I can definitely share it with my audience as well. So I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. So uh, Nicole, another question from uh, left field here. In your experience from hundreds and thousands of short sale deals, what would you say is like one of the most common mistakes a new uh, real estate investor makes in this world of trying to do short sales? Yeah, I, I think the most common is where how they market to these to these homeowners. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of times, and this is just sales, a lot of times people market what they think is important instead of trying to view it as a consumer. So they say things like, hey, I'm going to buy your house cash and don't worry, I'm going to close in seven days and da, da, da. And the homeowner's like, oh my God, that's absolutely not. That sounds terrible. Like I have nowhere to go. And this is, this is terrible. And yes, the investor most likely would have, you know, 
extended it and, you know, probably come up with a solution, but they cut themselves off at the knees because now you immediately turned off this homeowner because you didn't try to approach it as, Hey, I have options for you. Instead, you assumed like, this is what's going to be attractive to you on why you're going to contact me. And so it's important to understand that really you need to understand where they're coming from. You need to understand how to talk to these people. Uh, because if you don't, you're never going to gain any traction and you're going to be missing out on incredible deals. And most importantly, on helping a lot of people save the house, whereas they would have lost it because they don't even have the education that they can do something before it's too late. And, you know, people say things about investors like, oh, they're, you know, trying to make money or whatever. No, they're actually doing a huge benefit because if they were to just list the house on the market two, three weeks, they'd probably lose it because most people can't close that quick. Right. So it's a great it's a great solution for both parties if both parties can learn how to talk to each other and, and really bridge that gap. I know investors that are killing it with pre foreclosures that go through our trainings because now they're the experts. They're building rapport by just being a human being and trying to help and be a resource for these people. And now they have so many deals that they're working because they're like, you know, you know, if Jay, if Jay's the one that's approaching this homeowner, I'm working with Jay. Jay's my guy. Like he's taking care of me. And that's what you want. You want the homeowner to feel like, hey, I'm being taken care of. Like, I don't care that I'm selling this at a discount. He's saving my house and providing a solution that I didn't think was possible. And so when it comes to real estate investors, that's the number one thing that they do, um, that they come to us. We have a boot camp, a four-week boot camp, where we teach them how to market to pre-foreclosures, how to speak to them, the different options so that they're educated, so they can walk them through it ultimately leading to massive rapport because they're like, they're, they're the experts and now they're getting more deals. That totally makes sense, Nicole. So I know we've got a ton of uh, listeners here uh, that would be interested in short sales. Uh, what's the best way for them to get, for them to get started and learning from how to do that learning from you and your team? Yeah. So if you are, you know, we, so first of all, we have a masterclass that's, like 30 bucks and it's an hour masterclass. And that's the best way to jump into it because we're live for an hour. Uh, we do a Q and a, we show you a case study from start to finish on a, on a short sale that we've already closed. And it'll tell you right then and there, after you take that class, you'll either be excited because you're like, this is a niche that I can get into that I can work with. Or you're going to say, okay, I'm glad I have the knowledge, but I'm good. <laughs> I'm just going to refer them out. So it's, I always tell people before you spend any type of money doing mentorship, before you do anything, let's, let's talk about it first, join the masterclass, read the book. And you need to know this anyway, right? Like you need to at least know enough to be dangerous, but before you spend a bunch of money, take that first to see if this is something that you want to get into. And how can someone sign up for your masterclass? So just go to our website, uh, vssqueen.com, and then you'll just, there's an investor tab and it'll say short sell class, and then you can register for the next class. That is awesome. Nicole, that has been so exciting to have you here on the show. Uh, what parting advice or parting comments uh, would you give to the audience? Um, I think the best advice I can give to someone that is, you know, just a real estate investor or just in the industry is always think about providing solutions right? So you get into this business and you're just trying to get a deal. And the best way to do it is don't, fo when you focus on one thing with your marketing, how can you provide solutions to as many homeowners as possible? Have an exit strategy for absolutely everything. You're going to learn really quick. Marketing is not cheap. So you want to be able to have all of these tools in your tool belt so that you can get more deals and make, in the end, Excellent. Excellent advice, Nicole. I just can't tell you how excited and how uh, thrilled I have been to have you on. And Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, share with myself and with the audience. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You look, uh, you Ben, I look forward to seeing you at another one of our upcoming um, mastermind meetings. There you have it, folks. Another episode of this podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level, and we'll see you right here on the next podcast. Mm -hmm.